video evidence. I'm sorry, put her in custody right now. I you don't approach the bench. I oh, she didn't know. I'm sorry. This is not the way you do things. Is this your witness? You don't approach this court and defy this court. Take her into custody right now. Put her right over there. Talk to her about what's proper and what's not proper. You don't uh, come up and approach this bench. You can nod your head. You want, after Bartholomew Granger attempted to kill me and killed people in this courthouse, you have to understand the rules of behavior have changed. Filed in us. 23CR197 is called Arthur Washington. That is you, sir. And you are here with Mr. Adams, your attorney, the state's attorney. We are here. Uh, you are indicted for the third degree felony of assault on a family or household member. Also, this uh, shows that you in 2016 were previously convicted of a similar type offense. And in the county court of law of Jefferson County. So this now is a third degree felony. Any subsequent uh, similar assaults made as alleged here are all felonies. And the present bond is $20,000. That's my understanding, Jeff. Which the defendant has obviously not made. Well, he did. Judge, you you took him into custody last week based on my motion. Okay, he increased and that. gave me an opportunity. He held without a bond. Uh, okay. Until we had this. Now, this shows that. Allegation in paragraph three. The defendant is accused of having contact with the victim of the offense in violation of bond conditions and holding children hostage in an effort to get the complainant to drop charges would if true be really terrible. And um, go on, go ahead, state your motion. No, I would call Amber Robinson. Come on up there. We have her at stand just to keep the proper distance, Judge. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. All right, go ahead and state your name for the record, ma'am. Amber Robinson. Right. Okay. You need a, you need a I spelling? I can hear her whole Go ahead and spell it so we can be clear. Okay, and you are uh, the name complainant in this cause number where there is an accusation for family assault, are you not, ma'am? Against this gentleman, Mr. Washington. Uh, okay. He's accused of having assaulted you back on December 3rd of 2022. Okay. All right. And I'm not going to go into the facts of that particular matter. I want to talk to you about any contact he's had with you since the, this was indictment was returned. Do you understand that? Okay. okay. This indictment shows to have been returned on April 26, 2023. Has he had contact with you since that time, ma'am? Yes, sir. And at that time, was he out on bond, to your knowledge? Yes, sir. And did you, in fact, call my office about that sometime in August? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me initially what took place that resulted in you call, calling the, August, the office yeah. in August of 23. 
اون اتفاق خواهش که بگم وقت شو بجنه اول بگم هم هم که این سطح اکسترم هیگر دمانی این برای کیتا و نو این سطح اگر پارد بگم هم بگم که این سطح اکسترم هیگر دمانی این سطح اکسترم هیگر دمانی So, <clears throat> was that the time frame? Was that August of 23? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember exact the exact date that he had contact with you? I don't remember the date. I just remember calling you. Okay, you remember calling me. But as far as did you have contact with this individual? And I'm pointing yeah. at Arthur at Arthur Washington. Yes, sir. Is it true that this gentleman in the orange standing before the court is that who who we're talking about, Mr. Washington? Yes, sir. And you stated uh, that he that you all did have contact, yeah. and he was. You went so fast. I want to slow down. Oh, okay. okay. The two of you have children. Yes, sir. How many? Five. And what are their ages? Um, nine, ten, five, and eight months. Forty-five months now. Okay. At that time, who is who was the custodial parent over these children? And you still are, right? Is there a domestic order regarding the possession time that y'all are supposed to have? That's what I mean. And does it say his time that he's supposed to have and the time you're supposed to have? Yes, sir. This particular time when you went to get your children, was it your time to have custody of the children? Yes, sir. And you went to get them from whom? I went to get them from the mom with the mom that he had. I spent them about it. His mom? Yes. Okay. So that's the paternal grandmother. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Okay. You got to always make sure you give a yes or no answer. Okay. So his mom had the children. Yes, sir. Or was supposed to. Yes, sir. You discovered they weren't there. Yes, sir. When did you when did contact occur between the two of you, meaning Mr. Washington and yourself, ma'am? Oh, the mom. Okay. And what did he tell you? All right. So at some point in time, he tells you on the phone he's not returning them unless you get the children, give unless you drop the charges. Yes, Did you then in fact try to contact me in the efforts to try to get these charges dismissed? Yes, sir. Was it because it didn't happen or was it because of this threat that was made against you? I feel like I went to the job charge earlier. But just because of the threat, yes, right? Yes, sir. Was there any? Is there any chance that what he said to you that you you misunderstood it? No. Was he very clear about what was required before he would return the children? Yes, sir. And ma'am, I put in my motion, and I quoted that he was holding the children quote unquote hostage in an effort to get you to drop the charges. Yes, sir. Were you the one that said that? What? That he was holding them hostage? I did. Yeah. He was holding them hostage. Have you been able to get your children back? I had to go get paperwork. And then once the young people get out of my place. So when he went into custody last week, <clears throat> was when you were able to get your children back? Yes, sir. Thank you. I've done a bit of domestic practice, so I'm, I'm familiar with the terminology that's used in domestic orders. Is it fair to say that what he had underneath that domestic order was what's called a standard possession order? Meaning he wasn't supposed to have the children except for the first, third, and fifth Friday weekends? Is that an accurate statement? In the time frame that we're talking about, this was well and outside of that, that time frame, correct? Yeah. I have no further questions, Sean. All right. I understand you have been at the state and style motion to increase my plan on the data. But as it relates to factors for setting bills, one of the factors is the nature of the offense and the certainty of how they approach. Yeah, I would object to that as relevant. That's not all my fault. That's that's a legal issue. She she's not in a position to answer that. Okay. As it relates to the nature of this particular office in this particular case, uh, the alleged complaint was made on December the third, twenty twenty two. That's correct. 
Would it be the sum of the third of the two? All right. And do you remember uh, any Beaumont police officers coming out on the scene on that particular? Day? I don't object to going into the back to the offense. It's, I limited my question specifically to the issue at hand. It's it's whether or not. It's, it, 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 what's the ball? ball? And I can go into the factors, and one of the factors is the nature of the circumstances of the offense. That's directly out of the code. If he's going to act that the bond be the offense that she's that he's charged with, is yes. that you're going to go into? Yes, I, I think I have every right to go into it. Well, I thought back. you were leading into the issues concerning I'm gonna get there, the but, connection, the, the uh, contact. I, I'll, I'll get there, but I think one of the factors is the nature of the circumstances of the offense. I can access about that. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, for this particular offense, this Officers from the uh, Beaumont Police Department arrive on the on December the third of twenty twenty two. No, I don't remember that. I just remember one in November and one in December. And were you aware that Officer Conconez did not observe any injuries while he was on the objection? Your Honor, just helpful what attempting to testify. What's the objection? The objection is you're attempting to testify. As I was saying, the objection is counsel is attempting to testify. He's got her on cross examination. He can ask leading questions. Does not believe uh, overruled. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you know, at least according to the case supplemental report? Uh, the officer did not observe any injury on you while on the scene. Did you know that? No, because what they did was that they And did you know, do you remember Mr. Ham asking you about uh, you calling him? Hold on, just a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What are you asking? What report are you referring uh, to in asking her question that you asked last? I got the case supplemental report. Uh, it's printed on 210-2023. This is Officer Conconez, BS. According to reporting officer, he did not observe uh, an obvious injury while on the scene. And I got this uh, in discovery. I'm reading right here from this report. I don't, I, I don't have that in this file. I have a probable cause affidavit dated February 10th, 2023. Right, you don't have that. that Which I reviewed photos taken by Boma police and observed a minor scratch in Robinson's neck area and a minor scratch to her right hand. And based upon this information, there was probable cause to believe that the defendant committed the crime according to this probable cause affidavit by Coquinas. Right, so I, I read directly the word for word, I uh, underlined it. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Go ahead. And I'll show you, as I'm questioning you, this was a handwritten statement that you provided in your own handwriting. Is this, in fact, your statement? Yes. So basically, as I understand from reading the reports, you told the police officer that my client bit you on the right leg uh, he struck you on the right side of your face multiple times, and then uh, he also choked you. Is that what you told the police officer, right? Yeah, yeah. right. But then when, in fact, uh, they observed you, uh, there weren't obvious injuries observed on you. Is that right? No, I didn't have injuries. I still have pictures of my partner. I actually saw them the next day, the next week. Then I obviously couldn't see him. 
And then you indicated in your report or your statement that the reason that y'all had a disagreement is about a car that you said he stole, excuse me, that he stole from you. That's what you put in the report, right? Yeah. All right. But in fact, he is the registered owner of that car, isn't he? So he's the registered owner, but you're saying he's, he, he forged your name, is that right? Yes, All right. And then this car that is registered in his name, that he is the uh, registered owner of, did in fact on this particular day, you damaged that car. I got you. But for purposes of the nature and the circumstances of this offense, Mm -hmm. Which it occurred on this particular time, you damaged the car, and here's pictures of the damage that you did to the car on this day. Correct? I object to all that judgment. That's an evidence that he's got before the witness. Oh, go on. It's this damage to the car on the date of this particular case that you did. Um, yes, because he was hitting the car and I had to. Literally kick and fight him off. And just, so, yeah, it's going to be damaged in the car. Okay. So, the damage that was done to the car on this particular day, to the windows, mm -hmm. to the inside of the car, uh, that was damage done by you. I marked this as uh, plaintiff's exhibit, not plaintiff's, I'm sorry, defendant's exhibit A. And that's pictures of the car that she damaged on the date of the How many? Photographs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I ask that they be admitted in the court look at them the record. And let the record reflect that I'm showing polls and counsel that I the picture that I have. I'm going to check the foundation on these. Your Honor, there's nobody that's testified that they were true and accurate copies of what they purport to be. She did. She, He's, I'm sorry. I did not hear her make that statement, nor did I hear that Ken question Burke, asked. It's to the satisfaction of the court, they're admitted. Here, Your Honor, I ask that you want to look at them. I don't need Sam. Hmm. You don't want Sam? No. Uh, I don't think that's really fundamental to the whole subject matter of this proceeding. Grand jury indicted with the information they have. We're going to stand by that. Mm -hmm. They would have investigated it. They decided that there was probable cause to believe he committed the crime. I'm here more concerned about this standard bond condition order that I and the judge next door mm -hmm. um, authored, which states the defendant shall not communicate either directly or indirectly with the complainant of the, of the pending uh, offense. Nor shall the defendant go near any residence, school, job site, or other location frequented by the complaint. That is catastrophic to this court if you fail to follow this condition of probation. And if it's found that someone is not only attempting to contact, but attempt to manipulate the investigation or scuttle the investigation that was brought by this grand jury, then they will be dealt with severely. Okay, so, so the report is made on December the 3rd of 2022. You testified that you had called Mr. Ham uh, regarding dismissing the case, and you said Mr. Ham told you that he would not dismiss the case. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. All right. And when, but that's not the first time that you reached out to anyone about dismissing the case. Uh, in fact, didn't you? That has, what does that have to do with the bond conditions that were violated allegedly? Well, that's what we're here for. We're not trying this case right now. I've heard enough about the underlying facts of the case and what the because uh, I think it but goes, it, it goes to what it goes to exactly. His allegation is is that he is putting pressure on her to dismiss the case. That's that's one that's of the things. Let's go get. into that. And why don't we go into I'm that? Saying, that's what the motion is. But what I'm saying is, is that in January of 2023, uh, he was not even in custody in about this particular case. He reached out to the police. She reached out to the police and said she did not want to pursue criminal charges. And I have I'm that. I'm sorry. It report. would be it would be for the uh, executive branch of government to decide, not her. 
Right, but the point that let's I'm move making, on to the point, which is, did he violate a condition that of he bond? Did not. But, let's get well, let's deal with that. Right. So my point is, is that the state is alleging that somehow he's pressuring you, but when this case first started, you wasn't under the pressure to say that you did not want to pursue charges, right? Only because I was having a conviction with him being on, and I was on a heavy medication, they did not call and told them after I was at home. Then call him. So then a month later, you changed your mind in February. Was that because the reason you're making up these allegations is, is that he has a new a girlfriend who's in the courtroom right now, and you're mad about that. I'm going to object to the wording of that question, Judge. That's not a legal it assumes objection. facts. He's not making a legal objection. Uh, it's good enough for the court to sustain. All right. Isn't your motive for lying today is you're upset that he wait, wait, wait. girlfriend? What's the lie? The lie is, is that he in turn is contacting her and threatening her if you don't drop the that's charges. that's the issue that's, of this case yes yes and that's what i'm saying she has a motive to make that up and i'm asking her about that motive and that's very relevant do you deny sure. that or agree deny. next question well in fact are you aware that he does have a new girlfriend i, I have a new boyfriend so okay. i have they have nothing to do with for purposes of contacting you at what point are you aware that he's in he's taken in custody in this particular case what? when does he go to jail in this case I don't even know she doesn't know or right. ask your next question for purposes of contact do you know that the judge required him to wear an ankle monitor when he was uh, released on bail did you know that did, did you know that to my knowledge the probation department has not given us anything and nor has it been played by the state that he wait, wait, wait. Your question is, to my knowledge, which she wouldn't, unless unless she's a brain mm -hmm. surgeon or can read your mind and thoughts, she can't answer your question. Do rephrase you, it. I'll, I'll rephrase it. Do you know whether or not he has violated any of the conditions of his ankle monitor? That's for me to decide, not her. Do, Next. Well, well, Let's get to the issue. Okay, for purposes of contact. Come on, we got a lot to do today, and now we're far field. Do you know, has he made any calls to you on your cell phone uh, since he's been released from jail? Any calls? I told you about the time. Who was that? I don't, I don't know. I ain't about to answer because I don't know. We didn't we come. I don't know. I don't want to answer wrong or right. I don't know. She doesn't know. All right. So you don't know if he's made any calls. The, the kids, how did the kids get to his residence where he had an ankle monitor? How did they get there? Um, they his mother because I... Okay, I was in the and then I guess the kids were with him because she said she had nothing to do with it. I wasn't supposed to have contact with her. I was in my house. I said, How are you doing paperwork? And that's when I had to go get paperwork from my talk to work. But I don't remember this about. Then, in fact, you dropped the kids off to his home. To his mother. I didn't know who he was. So you dropped the kids to his mother, is that right? Uh -huh. And then his mother brought the kids to his home, right? I don't know. I don't know. So in the state's allegation where it says that he's having contact with you, then you don't remember any phone calls. Let me ask you a different question. At any time, does he show up to your residence? At any time, does he show up to a residence where you are? Right. At any time, does he show up to any place that you employ? Is, it, is there any time that he shows up to any function or place where you at? Um, I told you the last time I talked to him, he told me about the charges. And that was the, I don't remember, nothing else other than that, sir. The date that you say he told you to drop the charges? I went to therapy behind it, I don't remember that yet. Okay. Was that a telephone call or was that in person? It was over the phone. And he told me that then I called, uh, one time I left the residence, I went over the phone, he shot me my keys. One time. That's when it happened. It did not call uh, him or something like that. I got a jump charge from the That's it. That's all I remember. Now, the children, the, the second part of his motion is, is holding the children hostage. The children that you said that you dropped off to his mother, and the mother in turn dropped them off to him. At any point, did you go to his home to try to get these kids? I don't know. Police officers. Family? I had police officers meeting to talk to the mother. At, at his house? At the mother's house. 
Okay, then what happened when you went to the police? No, no, and then it was like, she don't have anything to do with it. It's the dad, and he was telling me, no, but even though I had a paperwork, and we have a custody order, not custody, we have a custody order, that's what we're holding the child, it's, it's a crime. If you're going to get the custody order, there's a 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 his mother's house to his house with a kid. No, my kid's house, I don't know. So you don't even know where he lives? I don't know. The last time I talked to him was when I went out there and he told me he couldn't talk to me. And he was talking to me. After he saw recording. So when is the last time you went to his house? To get my children, I don't remember the name. Oh, it's police. I passed the witness. I got it. No further questions of the witness, Judge. Okay, can this lady be excused? You're Please. Excused. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Stay dressed. What says you? I call. Uh, Come on. We got give me the. Uh, Hello. Tammy uh, Aguilar. A matter of uh, judicial. Yeah. yeah. Economy me, Judge, I'd ask for a proffer so we know what we're about to hear. No, I don't have any legal basis to give. I'm asking you to do that so I, I can to determine whether we're going to waste time or not. Summarize what you intend to present, please. Thank you. Well, Just summarize it, and we'll hear from her. Summarize it. Thank you. Well, I think that don't look at him. Go over to me. Come on. Just well, summarize looking at it, looking at Just looking. What is? What do you intend to present here? I, what I intend to present is, is that she is the mom that the lady was referring to where the kids were dropped off, and she had direct knowledge that my client did not contact uh, the lady and did not. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony that you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Doc. Yes. Lower your hand. Your witness, go ahead. All right. Then. All right, let's deal with the two points that uh, Mr. Helm makes in his motion. The first one is, is that your son is accused of having contact with Mrs. Robinson upon him being released from jail. So let's deal with the first one. Do you have any knowledge as to whether or not that's true or false? That's false. How do you know that that's false? Because um, my son is at our house in my home. And um, she brought the kids off to the house. Okay. And, you know, he, he, he knew that he couldn't have no contact with her, so he had not been answering calls. He had not been texting her back or any of that. Now, when you say he hasn't been texting her back, has she texted him to your knowledge? Oh, yeah, she had texted me, my son, and my daughter. And why is she texting you, your son, and your daughter? Why? Checking. She had calls for speculation. Tell us if you know. Yes, because you know she keep on saying like we don't want to give her a kid and stuff like that. But that's not that's not so. My son enrolled the kids in school. She brought the kids off. She had an issue with her grandmother. Her grandmother passed away. She wound up uh having the kids come to the house. And my son, um, even with the ankle monitor on, because he had to call the people and tell them you know where he's going and whatever. He enrolled the kids in school. She didn't have the kids enrolled in school. The kids is going to school. The kids objection. You're this is just whatever. going into a narrative. Yeah, she's repeating herself, man. Okay, so in terms of his second point, where he says in his motion that uh, my client is holding the children hostage in the effort to get her to drop the charges, do you know whether Mr. Ham is wrong in his assertion in that motion? Well, actually, um, yeah, because my, the kids, my son and the kids were at the home with, with us. I didn't hold them hostage. You know, he, 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 he wasn't holding them hostage. He was... It was going to school and everything like that. He had a, a, a race for them to go to school because the mother didn't have him in school. And then he knew that they couldn't be together. And I was calling the Orange Police Department because we live in Orange. And I said, no, she kept coming to the house. She kept coming to where, where, where he is at. Do you know whether or not this lady has made false allegations against your son? Oh, yes, most certainly, yes. And do you know whether or not she has a reputation for being honest or dishonest? Very dishonest, yes. And do you have an opinion as it relates to her character? Yes, I do. I think that um, she had uh, uh, mental issues. She got bipolar, schizophrenic. Also, with the kid and my grandkids, my son uh, got his son, his children because they, he called CPS because she has some other kids. The outside of them. With the and, and they, sustain. Um, sustain. And they, um, Hold on. I just sustained. You, got, you need to speak. 
it was quit speaking. Oh. How do you know she's schizophrenic? Because um, how do you she, know that? Because she she told us. I mean, over the years they've been together like ten years. What, what, what did she say? She said that she had mental health issues and she been having um, mental health issues since she was a kid. Okay, you know, but so how did she? She got a lot of trauma. How did you diagnose her with schizophrenia? She told me that. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, she okay. told me that. And then but you didn't. Like she told me different stories but, about. Hold on. Okay. You like to talk, don't you? Well, over I, others. No, not over others. Excuse don't me. do that. When I speak, you stop. Most you have absolutely no medical training on psychology or psychiatry, do you? No. Okay. Go ahead. Right, but you don't need any training in psychology or, or medicine for a person who has a mental illness to tell you they got one. Okay. Right. And and a person doesn't need any kind of training at all, right? No. And since that's the state's case that he called her. I haven't called her, so I can call her to testify where she got me. Now we can put on the objection to the argumentative form of these questions. Uh, what's the point of that question? What she, she's going to agree with you that she could that you can do that under the rules of evidence? That's well, not for her to say. Well, I just, Come on, let's, I just get to the point. We'll be here all night on side trails. Let's go. So, this is just a motion to increase. Not a global trial. Let's go. So with her with her mental illness, <laughs> did that factor in uh, as to why she, she's making up these allegations? Yeah. How does she know that? Well, she knows her. She, well, she just she, I'm not even, she doesn't know. That would be for Dr. Grappon to analyze and decide. I asked a different question then. Uh, the lady that's in the courtroom to my right, do you know whether or not your son's uh, relationship with her uh, has anything to do with her making up these allegations. Check and speculation. How do you? How would you know that? Unless you're a, are you a mind reader? First? No, I'm not a mind reader. Uh, okay. So how many different you know? they have? When, when I speak, stop. Okay. I just, it just one so more, so one so more so time, much. one more time. You do that, you will be held in contempt of court. Oh, thank you. Because I get the feeling you like to control. Are you through? Can yes. I speak now since yes. I'm supposed to be in control of this hearing? Yes, sir. Is that okay with you? Yes. 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 Answer his questions, please. Don't take over the hearing. All right. Go ahead. All right. Do you know whether or not the lady in the courtroom has factored into uh, her making up these allegations, the son's relationship with her? Do you yes. know? And tell us how do you know that? Objection. It's irrelevant, Judge. It's just that. So at the end of the day, and I'll, I'll, I'll pass you, at the end of the day, are you saying that your son, to your knowledge, did not hold any child hostage and threaten her to drop charges in this case? Not at all. And, and, and as it relates to him having contact with her, is it your testimony that she has been the one re reaching out to him? Yes. Is that right? And I don't know who that is. Go ahead. Ask your next question. Ask your next question. And in this particular case, once he made it clear to her that he was moving on, was she upset about that? Yes. Objection is to relevance, Judge. I died to relevance. Oh, sir? I'm sorry. I, I keep going. And once he made it clear to her that he was done with her, was she upset with him to the point that she would lie? Yes. Pass the witness. Anything? No, I don't have any questions. Your excuse. Next. Okay. Uh, I'll call Who else? Dontavia uh, Pryor. I would again ask for a proffer so that we can limit what is brought in. I'll judge. We'll make sure we're dealing with relevant questions. We haven't. We've really pretty much skirted away from that. Haven't I'm, we? I'm still doing my best. Well, he's sitting slide. What did you just say? Oh, he just sounds a little up in here. No Raise your right hand. You saw me swear or affirm any statement you make today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, sir. Lower your hands. Let's get to the point. I'm, I'm just going to deal directly with what he put in his motion. All right. Do you remember when your brother was released from jail on this particular case? I don't know. Um, no, sir. All right. Do you know? Well, I know you don't know the specific date. 
but do you know whether or not he was initiating any contact with Ms. Robinson or vice versa, she was initiating contact with him? Do you know? Um, yeah, she was initiating contact. Okay, how do you know that? What was she doing? Because I've seen her literally come to her house. She began to harass me at a point, um, texting me about um, flat arms and uh, some stuff I had borrowed from her, and also saying that I had stolen her car at point and that I needed to pay her money. Uh, if not, I would get charges pressed on me. Okay, so she's met, she, she is texting you, she, she's texting him. Uh, reaching out to your mom, right? Yes, sir. And while he's out on bond, uh, to your knowledge, is he trying to make contact with her? No. Could you tell the judge why she's doing that to your knowledge? Um, I believe that she's mentally incompetent. I think that when she doesn't get her way and that what he says, I don't want to be with you anymore, she tries to force and abuse him and abuse the power of the law um, and manipulate him and say, you don't want to do me fine. I'm going to say and lie and do all these things um, to make it seem that you don't want to do me, you go to jail. That's basically what she does. And she tried to do it to me as well. All right. And then when Mr. Ham writes in his motion that uh, my client is holding the children hostage in an effort to get her to attempt to drop the charges, is that a false statement in this motion? Yes, sir. Why is that false? Because he had an ankle monitor on at the time. Um, if he violated um, anything with the ankle monitor, his parole will be notified. He never left of our knowledge. So there's no point in believing that because, I mean, there will be proof. Like, there's no proof. He never left the house. And then also at the time, um, we only had one car, which is the car that was stolen that he keeps saying. That's my car. That's my car. We only have one car at the time. I just recently bought a car. Um, I didn't have a car. My mom didn't have a car. Objection to the car. narrative form of the answer, Judge. Sustain, sustain, sustain asking a question, question and answer form. Go ahead. So, so I guess I'm getting, let's go straight to the point. Mm -hmm. The long and short of it is, is to your knowledge, did he at all hold these kids hostage? No. Okay, did she make any efforts to pick up the kids from y'all? Um, no. Oh, she didn't make any efforts up until it was time to come to court. Um, she came to the house and my nephew ran out, and then that was her drive. Like, oh, okay. he stole my kids. I need to do this now. And do you know why she dropped the kids off to your, your mom? Um, I mean, she can't handle them. Honestly, that's really why. She she always has been like that. Um, she can't handle the kids on her own, so she called them back on and then once he don't want to be with her, she starts calling the police and saying, you're going down base because you don't want to be with me. All right. Um, anything else? Any questions? Um, uh, I do. Have, are you aware of a domestic relations order regarding these children? Yes, I'm aware. And isn't it true, ma'am, that underneath that domestic relations order that that lady is one that has custody of the children? Yes, she has. Is it also true that since August 8th, the time in which she claimed that he was holding his children hostage, that he in fact did possess the children from that date up until the time in which he was arrested last week? No, that's not true. So the children were not with him They're from with August. Him. Hang on a minute. They weren't with this, this man or a representative of his family from August 8th up until the time he was arrested last week. The kids were with us, but she let them be with us. The question the was where the children were. And the question and the answer is they were with either him or his family from August 8th when she claims that he was holding them hostage up until when he was arrested. They're that is a true statement. It is a true statement. Right. The children. Yes. Judge, he's badging the witness. He's 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 your he's your answer was yes, right? Fair right. opportunity. Yes, Understand you disagree with my wording, but the facts yes, are we the yes. facts are they were at your home. Yes. Thank you. Well, Mr. Mr. well Mr. Hamill said he did family law in those same orders. You have a standard possession order, but it also says as they otherwise may agree. That's also in these standard orders. So as they otherwise agree, she left the children. Objection, Your Honor. This is an argument, did not a question. Did she leave the children as otherwise, since he said he did family law, as you know that, they otherwise agree uh, she left the kids with him for that period of time, didn't yes, she? Yes, she did. Right, and that's a relevant part of the uh, order that he should know about. 
it, so it would say sidebar why would you why would you do that why would I, you just I say that that's terrible thing I you know better than that. that's like slapping somebody no it's really right. that's so far off the rules of evidence I know you're better than that. I'll, I'll, that's, I'll that's, that that's not I'll professional. In this particular case, were the kids with you guys because she couldn't help? Objection. Yeah. That's, that no calls for rule. conclusion. Go ahead. Answer. Yes, okay. sir. All right. Anything else? Pass the witness. No Anything? further questions. All right. You may be seated. Anything else? Just one question from this lady right here. And her name is uh, Malaysia King. And raise your right hand. You saw me swear or affirm the testimony you were about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yeah. Lower your hands. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you, well, state your name for the record. My name is right. On the issue of whether or not my client was having contact with Ms. Robinson or holding the two of the hostage, uh, do you have any knowledge about this? No. Right. He wasn't holding the hostage. Right. But when he started dating you, did you see a change in her? Yeah. And what was the change that you saw in her? The angry emotions. She uh, jumped in my DMs on Facebook and just makes me a whole lot of different stuff. This was whenever we first started dating. Okay. And what was she telling you? Objection, Your Honor, to the relevance. Uh, we call Objection, uh, relevance. Sustain. Do you know whether or not she's made this up because she's jealous of you? You can tell me if you know. Yeah. All right. And are you asking the judge not to re, uh, increase his bond because he has not been contacting her and she's making this up? Yeah. All right. Pass the witness. No question. Yes. You are excused. Next. Anything else? Anything? No. No. Nothing further. All right. Okay. Okay, the court has heard um, enough here this afternoon to uh, make my decision. Uh, the state's motion to, in to increase bond is granted. The probable cause affidavit in this case uh, states that the officer who investigated this case saw the, the victim with injuries and that her statements to him corresponded with the injuries that he observed. The grand jury investigated this case, deemed probable cause existed for this indictment. In this um, soap opera this afternoon that we've heard, the uh, um, gaggle of witnesses that the defense has presented really don't have anything to say that refutes this probable cause affidavit in this case. It gets down to obviously uh, almost a team sport this afternoon. Who's wearing the jerseys? How many more jerseys on one side can we produce? That's not the test. It's what this court believes rational and reasonable. One witness can carry the day. In this case, the court is going to believe the complainant, since the police officers who invested this case also uh, believed her in their investigation. I find the defendant, there is probable cause to believe in ponderance of the evidence to show the defendant has failed to honor the standard bond conditions as set forth by the criminal district courts in Jefferson County, Texas. As number three, the defendant shall not communicate either directly or indirectly with the alleged complainant victim of the pending offense, nor shall the defendant go near any residence, school, job site, or other location frequented by the alleged complainant uh, victim. Here, the evidence shows not only was contact made and communication made in violation of this by the defendant, but the motive is to attempt to manipulate and change the grand jury's direction that it implemented under law. What we're doing is the law is proceeding, but when the parties feel as though they can behind the scene try to manipulate the direction that the law is headed through the lawful steps in an investigation, then they are manipulating and can, trying to control the law, which the law does not allow. We're going to let this thing play out properly under procedure and rules of evidence court, criminal procedure and the penal code. The defendant's bond is revoked. No bond at this time as the defendant uh, has violated. There's no reason to believe that he wouldn't attempt, nor people on his behalf attempt to manipulate the facts of this case through this investigation, and he will be kept in custody until this trial proceeds. Anything else? That yeah. is all. Find the defendant. There's probable cause to believe in ponderance of the evidence. 
Two shows the defendant has failed to honor the standard bond conditions as set forth by the criminal district courts in Jefferson County, Texas. As number three, the defendant shall not communicate either directly or indirectly with the alleged complainant victim of the pending offense, nor shall the defendant go near any residence, school, job site, or other location frequented by the alleged complainant uh, victim. Here, the evidence shows not only was contact uh, made and communication made in violation of this by the defendant, but the motive is to attempt to manipulate and change the grand jury's direction that it implemented under law. What we're doing is the law is proceeding, but when the parties feel as though they can behind the scene try to manipulate the direction that the law is headed through the lawful steps in an investigation, then they are manipulating and can, trying to control the law, which the law does not allow. We're going to let this thing play out properly under procedure and rules of evidence court, criminal procedure and the penal code. The defendant's bond is revoked, no bond at this time, as the defendant uh, has violated. There's no reason to believe that he wouldn't attempt, nor people on his behalf attempt to manipulate the facts of this case through this investigation, and he will be kept in custody until this trial proceeds. Anything else? That yeah. is all. I have... Uh, what, are we, what are we going to do in Washington? Yes. That's, that's that's I, I mean, in Ronald Barn. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Judge. Am I able to use someone's laptop to show video evidence? I'm sorry. Put her in custody right now. I, you don't approach the bench. I, oh, she no. I'm sorry. This is not the way you do things. Oh, is this your witness? <clears throat> you don't approach this court and defy this court. Take her into custody right now. Put her right over there. Talk to her about what's proper and what's not proper. You don't uh, come up and approach this bench. You can nod your head. You want, after Bartholomew Granger attempted to kill me and kill people in this courthouse, you have to understand the rules of behavior have changed. You don't approach this bench. You don't try to influence this court. And we have bailiffs who, we have two bailiffs are guarding us, me and the other lady next door, because we are in a heightened sense of security. You just can't approach the court. We do it under the rules of evidence and hearings. You had a chance to be heard. If he wants to supplement the record and ask for another hearing, we've got other things to do. But you just don't approach me, whether it's here, outside, I'm guarded. There's just been too many acts of threats against this court's life. And I've got a family. And I've got a sworn duty to follow the rules. You just, this isn't people's court like on television, where you can just amble up here and start approaching the court. It has to be done in a proper basis. Okay. This goes with the file. Talk to her about I'll, what. I'll, 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 was this the one that you just introduced? Here, put this in the file. Talk to her about the proper method. If you need to do something, man, over here. If you need to present the court something, do it, do it through this man who called you as a witness, okay? And then there won't be any problems, but you just don't amble up here. You're lucky that the bailiffs let you come that far. Normally they don't. They get, people get intercepted who amble up here by themselves. Yeah. I think she really apologized. I talked to him. Just follow the rules. Are you confident she understands? You can never do that again. All right. All right. I'm Go. very confident it won't happen again. I still await them. Brian Lane. And accused of opening fire at the Jefferson County Courthouse was in Judge Johnny Stevens' courtroom today for a hearing on a pending trial. 41-year-old Bartholomew Granger was on trial March 14th for aggravated sexual assault of a child. A jury was picked and testimony had begun. The court was in recess on March 14th when shots were fired outside the courthouse about 11 a.m. Investigators say Granger opened fire with a semi-automatic rifle, killing one woman and injuring three others. His daughter and ex-wife were among the shooting victims. Police believe he targeted them because they were witnesses in his trial. The daughter remains hospitalized. Granger was in court today with his attorney after the defense filed a motion to declare a mistrial in the aggravated sexual assault case. For security reasons, part of the courtroom was blocked off with sliding bulletproof glass doors and four bailiffs stood guard. Judge Stevens granted a mistrial because of the heightened attention after the courthouse shooting.
A grand jury indicted Granger for nine felony counts on the shooting, including one count of murder. No trial date has been set on charges linked to the courthouse. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,